right, hey guys, Dr. Hackmeyer here, and if you're new to my site, I just want to welcome you to my YouTube channel. Today I want to talk to you about some of the symptoms you might expect to experience if you have high or an elevated TSH. Now this confuses a lot of people, I think many times because people see a high TSH and they think that because it's high that they have hyperthyroidism and when TSH is low that they have hypothyroidism. It's actually just the opposite. The thing you want to understand about TSH is that TSH is a response to low thyroid hormone levels in your blood. So the symptoms that are associated with high or elevated TSH levels present themselves as symptoms of hypothyroidism. So if you always remember that TSH is a response to the amount of thyroid hormone levels in your blood, then it only makes sense that a high TSH is caused by low thyroid hormone levels. Now remember that TSH stands for thyroid stimulating hormone. So its job is to stimulate the thyroid gland and kick the thyroid gland into gear because again, thyroid hormone levels are low. Now as a general rule of thumb, the higher your TSH levels go, typically what we expect to see is more severe hypothyroid symptoms. But this again would be verified by what is happening with the levels of T3 and T4. Now let me give you an example of what I mean here. Let's say you have a TSH of 11, right? Normal functional range uh, for thyroid levels for TSH is from 1.8 to 3.0. Now if you have a TSH of 11, we would probably expect to see more intense symptoms of fatigue and brain fog and weight gain and hair loss and trouble sleeping than someone who might have a TSH of let's say four because we would expect thyroid hormone levels, again, T4 and T3 to be specific, to be lower. So here are some more common symptoms that you see uh, in a woman with high TSH levels. So number one is weight gain. If you're having trouble losing weight and you're eating clean and you're exercising and the weight is just not coming off, then I'm very suspicious of an elevated TSH and low thyroid hormone levels. The next one is feeling cold. If you're the kind of person who's always reaching for a sweatshirt or a jacket when everyone else around you is comfortable, then again, to me, that's a red flag. And I'm very suspicious, again, of that elevated TSH. You see, your thyroid is like the metabolic furnace of the body. When the furnace in the house malfunctions, we have less heat in the house, right? It becomes cold. And when the thyroid shuts down or even slows down just a little bit, we often experience the sensation of being cold all the time. Now, another symptom of high TSH is, of course, fatigue. This is one of the most troublesome symptoms with high TSH, but it's also one that I see the quickest improvement in. Listen, nobody likes to be burdened uh, with this overwhelming sensation of being non-productive, right? So if you have to take a nap every day because of fatigue, or you need to have an energy drink, or you need to drink cups and cups and cups of coffee, this is a major red flag to me and shouldn't be ignored. Drinking more coffee and taking more energy drinks, while it may provide some immediate short-term relief and, and provide you with some symptomatic improvement, it'll have some very, very serious side effects on your health uh, long-term, right? The next red flag or symptom is changes to the menstrual cycle or symptoms of a sex hormone imbalance. Now, we tend to think of sex hormone problems like estrogen, progesterone, or testosterone being separate from a thyroid problem. But in reality, I've seen very few women with thyroid problems who don't have a sex hormone imbalance in one or more of these major sex hormones. This might be a woman who has zero libido. She's, um, she has no sex drive, right? She's always too tired to make love. This is the woman who might have a heavy menstrual cycle or a painful menstrual cycle. It might be a woman who has tender breasts or hot flashes or the woman who is finding herself moody and irritable. So for you ladies out there, never ever rule out a thyroid problem as a possible culprit or a contributor to the symptoms of a menstrual cycle irregularity, infertility, or menopausal symptoms. And most importantly, don't settle for a doctor who only tests your TSH levels and then tells you that your thyroid levels are fine. Most women having menstrual cycle irregularities or menstrual cramping or infertility will have low T3 and low T4 levels. So it's very, very important to get a full thyroid panel done 
not just a TSH screening or a TSH reflex, which is what most doctors order. The next symptom of a high TSH that I want you to be aware of is cold hands, or cold feet for that matter, or even low body temperature. If you check your temperature and you're finding that on a regular basis, uh, your temperature is below 98.6, this is a red flag, right? A high TSH can cause low body temperature, okay? So the next one I want you to be aware of is hair, la hair loss or changes in the texture of your hair or changes in your skin or even uh, your nails, for example. So for example, these would be symptoms such as your hair feeling more brittle or your nails are splitting. Um, is your skin feeling dried out? Is your skin cracking on the heels of your feet? Has your hairstylist noticed that your hair texture is different, it's thinner, it's not as shiny? If so, these again are all red flags that you could have a high TSH and low levels of T3 and low T4. Now the next symptom of a high TSH, uh, something that I think very easily gets overlooked because I think we tend to, to blame these symptoms on really what we're eating and overlook the connection or the influence that the thyroid gland has on digestive function. So whenever I have a patient who complains of belching or burping or GERD or constantly feeling bloated or constipated, or maybe even they've been diagnosed with irritable bowel syndrome, I always, always, always think about TSH levels as well as T3 levels and T4 levels, right? So always keep that in mind. If you have a gut issue, any kind of GI problem, think about the involvement that your thyroid has uh, with those glands. The next symptom of a high TSH, and one that I think is, again, very, very common, is brain fog, right? Are you experiencing slower mental capacity? Are you having problems with remembering names um, and issues with memory? Are you finding yourself reading a paragraph only to have to go back and read it all over again? Now, an interesting side note here is that low levels of dopamine in the brain will also cause low thyroid hormone levels in the brain, and this will lead to those symptoms of low dopamine, which include brain fog, loss of pleasure or enthusiasm in life, or a loss of excitement to the things that you once enjoyed, um, as well as low libido. So again, these are all signs of low dopamine as well. Now, I just uploaded maybe about a week ago or two weeks ago, maybe even three weeks ago, uh, a video on the symptoms of low dopamine. So if you're really struggling with some of the mental aspects uh, related to poor thyroid function. You may want to go back and watch that video. Uh, in that video, I go on to explain, you know, the different causes of low dopamine, some of the testing that I use to understand uh, dopamine levels, the certain neurotransmitters, and the impact that they have on thyroid function. I also review seven ways to naturally raise your dopamine levels. So again, if that's one of the major symptoms you're experiencing, go back and watch that video. Now, another major symptom, again, overlooked by most primary care doctors and, and even endocrinologists, are the symptoms of depression or sadness. What I find here is that the vast majority of patients with high TSH levels and low thyroid hormone levels struggle with depression. They struggle with sadness and hopelessness. And once we improve their thyroid function and really understand uh, why their thyroid is not working optimally, these symptoms of depression and hopelessness resolve within just a few months. Now, the reason I mention all of these different symptoms is because if your doctor has prescribed you thyroid replacement, we would expect the TSH level to go down if it's high, right? If you have hypothyroidism, remember, we're going to have elevated TSH levels. So when you take thyroid replacement, what we expect to see is we expect those TSH levels to go down. And of course, if that's the cause of your problems, then we'd also expect to see all of these symptoms improving. But guess what? This is not what we see, okay? If the problem is just thyroid related, in other words, if it's just caused by high TSH, taking that thyroid hormone will improve many of these symptoms very, very quickly, like a few weeks. If not, then there's something else going on inside your body more than just a high TSH. Now, if that's the case, what else could be causing it? Well, there could be problems with yeast or bacterial overgrowth in the gut. It could be issues with hormones like estrogen or progesterone. It could be nutritional deficiencies. It could be an autoimmune disease or a neurotransmitter imbalance. It could be inflammation. Uh, it could be chronic stress. 
could be problems with the liver or the blood sugar, right? There's many, many different things that could be causing that. It could be some of the medications you're taking. So again, keep in mind that there's not one single cause behind why you have an elevated TSH. Rather, usually many, many different things going on inside your body causing that TSH to be elevated. And that's what you really need to look at. Now, I've done a lot of different videos on these different topics and how they relate to thyroid function. So again, I encourage you to go back and watch some of these other videos on my YouTube channel. Um, these topics will, without a doubt, give you a much better understanding of how the thyroid gland works and why it stops working and why thyroid replacement is really not the long-term fix for addressing thyroid disease. But going back to the TSH and, and medication for just a minute, I want you to think about it like this. If the cause of all of these symptoms is the result of an abnormal or high TSH, then correcting that TSH should improve all of these symptoms. But again, I'll tell you that nine out of 10 times, this is not what I see. I see hundreds of men and women every single year and for the last 20 years who are on thyroid replacement and they feel just as lousy. They're still fatigued, they're still depressed, they're still tired, they still can't think straight. They still continue to gain weight. They still feel lousy and all the other symptoms that go along with it. There's literally not a week that goes by where I don't receive an email uh, or a patient telling me how lousy they feel and how thyroid replacement has not helped these symptoms. And so if you're watching this video and this is happening to you, something is missing in the management of your case. Something is terribly missing in the manager, management of your case. And while, again, I don't know what that is as it pertains to your unique case, I can say that with certainty that once these other puzzle pieces are identified, you'll feel like a new person again. All right. As I wrap up today's video, I hope you found this information helpful. I hope you now have a better understanding of TSH, why it's elevated, uh, what it means to have elevated levels, and then again, some of the symptoms that are associated with this high TSH. But most importantly, why it's time to dig deeper into the root cause, especially when you continue to struggle with these symptoms. Because if you don't, your health will only get worse on you. Please don't think that one day your thyroid medication is just going to start working. It's just going to start kicking in. If you're not feeling better after a few weeks, it's not going to mysteriously start working for you. It's just a matter of time before you get sicker. Now, I have one last thought that I forgot to mention, uh, is, and this actually relates to more of the thyroid markers. Please keep in mind that when there is a thyroid issue, that there's much more to understanding thyroid function than just the TSH. Women with thyroid symptoms should always be checked with a full thyroid panel, not a TSH and T4 alone, which is what most doctors do. A TSH is nothing more than a screening in my experience, and it misses about 80 to 90% of the people, men and women out there, that struggle with these symptoms. If you visit my website, you can see uh, more under the thyroid section, what a full thyroid panel consists of and the markers that I run when I first start working with a patient who struggles with thyroid disease. So I hope this video was helpful. That's gonna wrap up today's video and don't forget to hit that subscribe button. It allows me to keep these informational videos free and without all those annoying ads that we just, all of us just can't stand, all right? So again, if you have any questions about working with me or working with one of my nutritionists in my practice, whether it's just help improving your diet or implementing a particular kind of diet or you're looking to dig deeper into the root causes of your thyroid problem or the other symptoms you might be experiencing, visit my website and look for the Start Here button. Tell me a little bit about yourself, the kind of problem that you have, the kind of help that you're looking for, the, the symptoms that you're struggling with, and my team will get you the information that you need to jumpstart your health. All right? Till next time, I'm Dr. Hagmeyer. Take care.